All right. Hello, everybody. It's the Wrestling with the Willies podcast. It's been a minute, but like, uh, thankfully, it hasn't been that damn long since the last not, time we did yeah, one of the podcast. Not like the last Because time. it's only been like, I think, like a couple weeks, I think, maybe since Revolution happened, maybe three weeks. But uh, we're doing Revolution 2024 edition. So, and I don't have my shit up for the matches or whatever, but like, it's been, I don't know. To like a while. It's been a month since then. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, was, you know, I couldn't remember how long it's yeah, been. Yeah, it was March 3rd. I knew that it was. Oh, okay. So it's just been. So it's just been a month. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Like, I mean, trying to do all these podcasts and all this stuff and streaming a lot, especially Aaron's been streaming a lot lately. It seems like every day he's been streaming. So <laughs> you can probably hear him in the background if you guys are listening. Yeah, podcast. you'll probably hear him in the background. Yeah, more than likely I'll, because I think he's streaming currently as we're filming. Yeah, this. I'll try to cut so. out the background noise, but you might hear him say stuff in the background. But the first, uh, there were two preliminary matches on the kickoff show. The first one was the Bang Bang Scissor Gang, which is basically yeah. uh, the acclaimed with Billy Gunn and. Uh, or the guns and bullet, and, uh, uh, bullet, bullet, uh, bullet club, club gold. gold, and then they defeated Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, Jay Lethal, Willie Mack, and Private Party. I don't know why Jeff Jarrett just continues to hold on. Why was Private Party with Jeff Jarrett in them? <laughs> what? Because they had to find oh. a place for him, I guess. I mean, I guess, um, yeah, I liked it. I'm but sure. to, to caveat that. We did not watch the pre-show. Yeah, we usually don't watch the kickoff show anyway. We yeah, we don't watch it for... I think we just watched it late. Yeah, because we had to split it over a couple of days. Well, because we sometimes like getting on, on to like do the pay-per-view or whatever is the task well, this, by itself. The pay-per-view... Like, WrestleMania with, is going to be worse. The pay-per-view but, itself <laughs> only went... Or went four hours, and there were only eight matches on the card. So that'll tell you something. Yeah. So, and it, but ooh, but me. yeah, I mean, I don't. We didn't watch it, so that the Bang Bang Scissor Gang won that match. Um, I can't. Really and and to it's it. funny, you know, that we're already talking about it now. The Bang Bang Scissor Gang are already split up already. Yeah. <laughs> so it didn't take them long. I thought it was kind of weird. I don't know. Tony Khan's been doing some weird decisions lately, man. Yeah, and, his, and, his book, like the whole time, I haven't been saying. I've been trying not to like bring the comparisons between WCW and WWE now, and now it's just becoming more apparent. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> which we'll talk about it more. Yeah, later. I mentioned that that. I keep seeing it going late WCW realm. Is what's yeah, happening. it's like. Uh, yeah, it's like because decisions that I don't know why they came up with in the first place, and they already like kind of scrapped plans already. So like literally, this match didn't even matter because, uh, like I think it was on Dynamite a couple of weeks ago, uh, they split them up, where essentially I forgot who. Oh, Darby Allen. That's what it was. And they beat up Darby Allen. I think this is actually the first week after the, the after this. I think what the events that happened from this pay per view reacted to that because I think currently Darby Allen is off. I think. Well, he got hurt again. Um, oh, okay. But um, so, during uh, from the match on this card so we'll talk about it later oh okay yeah but, i'm not surprised. but i think i'm the, not surprised but, uh i uh anyways the the second uh match on the pre-show was the uh chris statlander and willow nightingale uh defeated julia hart and sky blue which that seemed kind of like a waste it well uh well no that just seemed like they were just filling the card really well, Dave Meltzer, you know, he does his star ratings, right? And he rate he rated yeah. that one and a match later, the lowest rated matches on the card. He gave both of them two stars. The other one he gave was the ten man tag match. Well, I will say this. I'm getting tired of like I don't think star ratings matter when it comes to the matches. I'm just tell- I believe I'm just pointing out I be- what he. No, I, he I get them. that. I, I mean, it's mostly because I've been seeing a lot of stuff 
where it's like, a lot of times it's like either against Dave Meltzer or with him. And like, I think he has obvious bias of not being a WWE person. <laughs> I think that's really, I don't think he's ever really cared about WWE wrestling because I mean, there's not like people have talked to before about Kurt Angle not having a five star match. And I just don't believe that. And then later on, we'll talk more, uh, because since this has happened, there's a CM Punk interview that came out that kind of sheds the light on issues that have, we, we have talked about on previous podcasts. So I kind of wanted to mention it, knowing that he used to be an AEW dude and went to WWE. I wanted to mention it on this one because it's kind of like with what's being talked about. Yeah, I just wanted to point out the the ratings because that was on the pre-show and it was one of the lowest rated on the card. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean... The other one was the 10-man tag uh, match. That's uh, Which, was that the one, the, the first one, the Sontenham Singh one? Or was it the other match that yeah, was on the card? it was the two pre-show matches. Oh, okay. So... That's yeah, what I'm saying. Surprised. It's funny that they rated them that low. But with that, we can go ahead. Since we did not watch them, uh, we'll go ahead with the first match on the card, and that was Christian Cage uh, with Kill Switch, Mother Wayne, and the prodigy Nick Wayne. Uh, that he defeated Daniel Garcia. Um, and, oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and that match was 16 minutes and 50 seconds. I didn't point out the pre-show matches because we didn't watch them, but I typically point these out when we're talking about it. Uh, and when we talk about WrestleMania, I guarantee you there will be a difference in timing for the matches. Oh, yeah. I'm sure because, because they have two days. The shortest, full of yeah, the shortest and, match on yeah. this card was Tony Storm's match later on. Um, so, uh, and that's probably like 16 minutes. Uh, or 12 minutes. Or 10 minutes. It was, or 12, yeah. it was 12 minutes and 15 seconds. Yeah. So, but once you go, and so yeah, like okay, I'm I'm over the I'm like I'm not a huge Christian Cage person anyway. So like lately, I haven't been really enthused with stuff, and I really like Daniel Garcia, but I feel that's why I say this is a problem with AEW is that their matches feel like they should matter, and sometimes they don't. Well. Part of the problem is, and I've talked to friends of mine, part of the problem AEW has is they don't have a buildup to the card. Like half half this card you didn't even know about until a couple of weeks before the freaking pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. So it's like... And I get like certain uh, certain matches you don't really... You're just planning them beforehand, but like... Yeah, but a lot of theirs are just put together at the end, though. Well, I mean, a lot of the time they end up having their long-term story angles, like stuff with Adam Cole and Ben and JF and Hangman stuff, like whenever he is, was going for the title, certain things, even like Hangman versus Swerve. But it's like one or two, three, um, like one or two stories that they kind of build up over time. But then there's like a bunch where they just put together matches. And I think that's the problem with what they do. But I mean, well, one of the biggest problems WWE in this, does it too. So I mean, they're not alone. One of the biggest <laughs> problems in this is Mother Wayne. I, yeah, I, I I don't even know why she's even involved yeah, on the I, other than the patriarchy. Yeah, thing. I don't either because but, she clearly isn't a wrestler. Right? Well, and she's, she's clearly, clearly not, not a wrestler. Good she's, actress either. Yeah, and she's not and like if once she tried to smack edge and it just kind of you could tell that she was like not into it or like she tried not to hurt him or whatever whatever the slap thing was like it was just like no she shouldn't be on tv and i think that i get like trying to like have a storyline and stuff like that and you're like hey like we'll do this but some people don't need to be involved with wrestling in my opinion i don't like just because Nick Wayne has been wrestling for a while now, like, because he's been underage, like, I think he started when he was 16 or something, like, 15 or 16, 
doesn't mean that his mom is going to be good at it. <laughs> so, like, I understand the patriarchy thing. Like, his whole, and like, Christian's whole shtick is the patriarchy thing where he has to make fun of the person's dad, especially if they died or not, it seems like. And then he'll be like, I'll be your daddy, bitch. And that type of stuff. I understand well, that. But Yeah, that's the one thing I'm liking <laughs> about Christian right now is the promos he's cutting. Yeah, um, like, the promos are fine, but, like, his wrestling stuff has never changed to me. Like, uh, and I was, like, uh, I think my favorite version of them was, like, Edge and Christian type stuff when they were tagging together, but I've never been a huge fan of Christian. Like, mostly because he, I don't know what it is. It's just, like, uh, I just don't really care for him. Yeah, all that much, and I definitely think that the TNT belt should go to up. I'm like, you should treat it like the Intercontinental belt. I feel like anybody that's wanting to go for the next title, that's how you should treat the TNT belt. So anybody that gets it, like Cody Rhodes, Dor- uh, Darby Allen, anybody that does that should be the next pedestal. They should do. The world championship. Even if they do a match and they lose, that's what that belt should be like. And this is just like they have no clue what to do with it. So then they're just like, we'll give it to Christian. And then even then, it's like then even after this match, because, I mean, there was not anything that I remember from this match that I really cared about just because I knew Daniel Garcia wasn't winning. But like, to, t- to tell you the truth, the entire, you know, this was one of the worst AEW pay-per-views I've seen. There was, I can, I consider one match on the card or maybe two great. And then the rest were just, yeah. eh. I mean, yeah, so, like... um, so to sit there, that's the only unfortunate part is we sat there for four hours and we split it between two days because we started watching it late yep. because Bleacher Report has a tendency to not, and Peacock does it now too, WWE Network used to be better where you could start it from the beginning, even if you started late. But now these yeah. networks both, you basically, you have to, if you start it late, you start from where it is going. So yeah and then you gotta wait like so much time to pass yeah so ultimately we started it late so instead of that we started watching it after it was over and bleacher report takes forever to put the pay-per-view up on oh yeah because there's been moments where like we couldn't even watch it until like three in the morning so then we cut (laughs) and then i have to wake up at like a certain time so like because my day job and stuff so like most of the time if it's like that then we have to wait until the next day at least to start watching it yeah and then work or working around with each other's schedules so so that's pretty much what we had to do. Like, I would watch it until I started getting tired. And I'm like, okay, I'll come back to this the next day. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> and then the next match, since we're, I think we're done talking about the, the Yeah, pretty occasion. much. I mean, like, especially the only difference is, is that I hope that Daniel Garcia eventually wins the title because I think with his promo skills and how he wrestles, I definitely think he should have a belt at one point. It's like certain people, Santana and Ortiz, I'm surprised that they never had the tag titles, even though well, now well, they're like not really not, a team. Well, Santana's not even in AEW anymore, I don't think. Mm. Yeah, I'm not surprised. They just did a, like, a speaking like, of Like, I know they that they said that they released few. people. Um, like, it, it sounded like they said that they released Malachi Black and shit, but I don't know. I haven't heard true. that one. Yeah, like, there was, like, something that I saw where they, uh, it what could I, have been, I what watched I, it on April Fool's, though, yeah, what I, like, on April 1st. Well, that's when they released them, but it was Stu Grayson, Dasha. Yeah, I saw that. Um, yeah, Dasha Anthony Fuentes. Henry, uh, The Boys, Jora Joel, Slim J, Gravity, Parker, Boudreaux, and Jose, the assistant. Those were the releases that I know of. Which I thought that they released Parker Boudreaux, like, Ages ago. I thought so too, but you know, he was <laughs> like, the next Brock Lesnar. I remember how they were touting him, and he's been horseshit. 
Yeah, they, they didn't do anything well, with him. He must not like, be that like, good because WWE didn't keep him and AEW now didn't. So that just... Well, I mean... Well, yeah, think like, about who he, AEW he, has, though, and they, they got rid of him. They have, like, so many fucking people. They have so many people. I know, but like, what I'm saying is is that he must not well, be that like, good it, to that keep. They don't have... Well, yeah, like, I mean, also at the same time, their, like, roster's kind of very bloated right now. Like, uh, I think that's their problem. It's same with, like, uh, WWE. It's like, I think they have ideas where they're like, oh, they fucked him up. Maybe we could try to do something better. It's like Miro's, like, one of them right now. Is that I feel well, like... Well, honestly, They, they started to do good shit with them, and then fucking... Well, Honestly, ninety yeah. percent of the WWE guys that went over there, they've done shit with. Yeah, I mean ninety yeah, percent. I mean Andrade I mean, left already. Yeah, Andrade left. <laughs> Mal- you know Malachi Black and Buddy Murphy are gonna leave the minute they can. Well, that's what that's what I saw was, but I mean, it, it also <laughs> could have been on April first, so they no, could have said ankle pulls. But they ain't doing like because really I saw something where Malachi Black. Buddy Matt Murphy, and then somebody else. I can't remember the other name. But you haven't even but, seen that they House released. of Black on anything. Yeah. You've, you're seeing Julia Hart all over the place, but you're not seeing the rest yeah. of them. And like, they, and, they, and like Brody King and I mean, all that. So, like, yeah. But yeah, but again, we're on Eddie Kingston. Uh, he defeated Brian Danielson. And part of this match, it was for the Continental Crown Championship, but if Danielson lost, he had to shake Kingston's hand. Which, I mean, is cool because it kind of ties in with their dynamic at the time. And this one was... But, like, now, it just feels like it was ruined. This match is probably one of my favorite ones on the card, even though that... Well, you're a huge fan of Eddie Kingston. I... I just really like Eddie Kingston, and I think he's, like, he has good promos because he feels like his character is him turned up to 11. But, I mean, honestly, I don't even think that it's that. I think it's just totally him as a person. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, his wrestling character is who he is. But Brian Danielson is kind of one of the ones that I was referring to and that they came from WWE and they really haven't done anything with them. Yeah, like, he hasn't even, like, I'm surprised that they haven't given a title to him or nothing. Yeah, so, I mean... like. And, and Moxley, they've given all the titles to, yeah. but they haven't done it. Well, maybe it's the decision where Daniel Bryan doesn't want to have the, or Bryan Danielson, whatever, like doesn't want the belt. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, like don't he know. wants to put over younger talent. Um, maybe yeah, I don't know. I don't know unless like he actually comes out and says shit. Like honestly, to people, you know. Yeah, I don't know. But like. That's the thing. Like the match was good. It was like, good. That's why I said it was yeah. meh. You know, it was like, it, and it was nineteen minutes and forty five seconds. And it's so. mostly because I think Kingston needs a new finisher. I think that's his problem right now. I think he uses his same finishers that he's used for years. Right, the hurricane and then uh, the stretch plum thing. I think he need and like to fit his character. I think he needs something new well, they, and fresh that will make him like do something different. All, you know, they, like, yeah. They like, also run into the problem with being stale because it reminds. me, Remember, I talked about previously how certain people, their matches, they do the same stuff all the time, and that kind of Eddie mm-hmm. Kingston. It reminds me of that. Like when when he's in a match. You're always going to see the chops, and you're always going to see yeah. certain things. And people were shitting on him for his chops. I'm like, dude, you do realize that in Japanese wrestling, they do those chops a lot. Mm-hmm. So it's not just him that do the machine gun chops. I mean, I think machine gun Carl Anderson probably did them at one point, too, and that's his nickname. So, like... I know that it's not just, and they were like talking about he was doing a light. I'm like, dude, you got to think about it. he's trying to smack him. Well, sometimes fast. Though, sometimes so you're going to miss. Sometimes mm-hmm. it just looks bad because he's doing it so fast. Well, that's all, that's, that's what like, I'm saying. He's doing it so fast, and he's trying, probably trying to not just 
uh, and wall up to dude, and, whoever he's doing it to. And part of that, right? he's part of that's the amount of shape that he's in. Like the dude's well, not that's the greatest. What, that's what I'm shape. saying. I think that he would. I think people would see him differently if he got into better shape. I mean, you see Kevin Owens, like he got a lot of shit for like. Even they were like I saw something where CM Punk got onto him for wanting to wear a shirt in the ring when he wrestled. And he was like, no, you don't need to have a shirt on. I'm like, dude, everybody could be different. That's the great part about wrestling. Especially when I see Kevin Owens, I'm like, dude, if Kevin Owens could do it, I could do it. Mm -hmm, Right? mm -hmm. That type of shit. And that's, you need people like that in wrestling. You need everybody to get behind certain people that they're into. Yeah, and I was reading about Kevin Owens, and it's very interesting, like, how much tie-in he has to Owen Hart and a lot of his stuff. Well, that's what, that's like what I'm his saying. Last like name all is this Kevin stuff that... Owens because of Owen Hart. Like, Oh, really? You know, I didn't realize and, that. And and hmm. I think their birthday is near the same and there's a few hmm. other things like he's a fan of his, so there's certain things I was reading about it. Well, I, I mean, look it up again, but <laughs> he's probably one of the best wrestlers to ever like lace up boots and like Owen and Brett were some of the best wrestlers ever. And he just lost his life way too early. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I understand why people would say that he would be the greatest of all time and all this stuff. Like, but my main thing is like, you see Kevin Owens now can't Kevin Owens has lost considerable amount of weight since he was in NXT. Even before then, he lost a lot of weight. You could tell I mean, he probably still doesn't feel fully comfortable ever taking his shirt off, but, like, I mean, probably because he doesn't want to. Even the Evil Uno talks about that. You, He wanted to eventually get to the point where he could take his shirt off and wrestle in it. And I think he's gotten to the point, oh, actually, now. The, it was about the Intercontinental belt. He, he won it for the exact same amount of days as Owen did. They both had two titles. Oh. They both had two title runs that totaled the oh. exact same amount of days. So he doesn't want to win it again. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, <clears throat> but I mean that's cool. I mean, like, and yeah, like. But anyways, we can move on. That's that. a, that's it's a, a it's cool thing. thing. Yeah, but yeah. Um, did you have anything else to but say yeah, on the Kingston any, match? I, that was another one I didn't really... Not I really. I mean, it, it fit the thing, and then he shook his hand. I feel like the stuff that they did after that kind of sucked, though, because, or at least for Kingston, they did all this shit, and then because there was rumors that Okada was showing up, and then and, and then he did. He lost like <laughs> and a week then later, he's didn't he? Like, literally, like, a week or two yeah. later, because Okada showed up at, was it before Big Business? Yeah. They showed he up, showed I up think the so, right? Monday after the pay-per-view, if I remember right. And, I, I met, like, I think it was a smart decision, not really to put him with the Young Bucks, but to put him as a heel, because he's been a face in uh, New Japan for so long. So, like, it's probably, like, something that he probably wanted to do in the first place, was to be a heel. But I don't think it's going to last long. If anything, they're going to be, he's going to get pissed off at the young folks and then take him and take them out at one point. So, like, and then, so they do this match and he wins and this and that. And I thought they were going to give him like a kind of a biggish title run. And then he loses to Okada like a week or two later. I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, damn. Like, uh, and people were saying disrespect to like Eddie Kingston. This ain't the last time you're going to see Eddie Kingston with a title belt. Let's just be honest. Obviously, Tony care, like likes Eddie Kingston because, and even New Japan cares about Eddie Kingston now because they're giving him title belts, which they weren't giving him before. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, he's turned his shit around. Like, a lot of people have talked about how disrespectful he was or the, um, he was holding himself back in wrestling and it probably does make sense he probably was the person holding him back like his attitude or whatever he probably didn't want to change who he was for people so like and because you you see him talk about other people and he just doesn't 
give a shit. Yeah. It seems like, it, and like, and I think that that's one thing I like about Andy Kingston is that he just feels like a real dude, mm-hmm. and like you don't. There's the reason why he's a babyface right now is that you'd like to cheer for him because I think everybody has been kind of in the similar place. Or at least a lot of people have been in kind of the similar place, like people like doubting you and shit like that. So I think he's not going to be a heel for a while because, I mean, most of the time, I think back when I knew that he was in Ring of Honor and all this other stuff, he was mostly a heel. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm just intrigued with what they're doing. I hope that they don't just do nothing with Eddie Kingston after this. So. Uh, and so what was the next the, match the after next that? match was Wardlow who was with Adam Cole Mike Bennett oh, and yeah. Matt Taven he defeated Chris Jericho Powerhouse Hobbs Lance Archer who was out there with Jake the Snake Hook Brian Cage who was with Prince Nana Magnus and Dante Martin and this was an yeah. all-star scramble match where the winner would receive a future championship match. Yeah. It, yeah. And considering how many and people you knew were, that Wardlow was going to well, win well, it. Well, yeah, but considering how many people were in the match, it didn't go very long. It was only 15 minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah. But this well, was I mean, one of those. Like, like, it was just all over well, the place. Well, that's what so. I was saying. It was all over the place. <laughs> and this was another one where Chris Jericho was, had, I guess, had to be on the card. And oh yeah, what, because he was in the match, and, yeah. yeah and, and then Darius Martin from yeah, Dante Top Flight. Martin. God, he had it so like many was botches. I was just gonna point yeah. that out because that was the one thing I remember. Besides things that happened a little bit later that I remember from the car. Like was, at one point, I think it was like he stepped up on the top rope, then he jumped down, then he jumped up and again and did a move. Yeah. Like and people were shitting on it and I I mean it I looked get like it. shit. Gotta, like, I remember because well, I pointed I'm, it like, out. That's that's the bad part about doing flippy wrestling though. It's like, especially a dude that's trying to be fast and everything. But that's else. why like, I think that's Ricochet the difference between so him good. and Ricochet. Ricochet though, is, a, is that Ricochet is up. on point. Yeah. yeah, he's on point every time. Mm-hmm. Same with Will Ospreay. They don't miss a beat. Yeah. Barely ever and do I, I see them. And I remember moves. when Logan Paul faced Ricochet. R- Ricochet made Logan Paul look excellent. Because yeah. he was catching him when he fucked up and all types of stuff, I remember all that. And but this one, when it when you falter, it's even more magnified. And that's what I remember from this match. Yeah. Now, yeah, out of who was there, I was like, it's gonna be Wardlow. Yeah. And, well, I mean, who else was it gonna be? Lance Archer was just in the match because they haven't done shit with him. Yeah. Dude, well, like, they have, talk about a dude that they've had signed and they haven't done fuck all with him. Mm-hmm. That was Lance Archer. They haven't done anything with him. Like, literally, I think at one point he was in with the Gates of Agony on Ring of Honor, and that's pretty much it. I'm well, like, and Brian Cage this is, is a another guy. one that hops around. He has an angle, yeah. then he has a different one, then he has a different one. Then yeah, different and then one. literally it seemed like he was in four different factions at one point. Like he was in the Mogul Embassy, then the and like or no, he was in with Team FD, uh, FTW. Then he w- went from that to something else. Then he went to Mogul Embassy. It's like they don't know how to build him up like a, and it's it's sad you knowing that it's like you ain't even giving him a shot to like, I don't know. That's the problem that I'm seeing with this shit mm-hmm. right now. And a lot of people are saying that the undisputed kingdom has shit the bed, and I kind of agree because they haven't done anything right with these guys. Like I get the whole using the only, Samoa Joe to get the title, yeah. but like I would have been like, no, just beat the shit out of MJF and then do something where you get the title yeah. or something. Well, you know, and they could have done something where like. They could have said, oh, like, Adam Cole gets into the match. Like, at one point, after Samoa Joe does stuff, Wardlow comes in, beats the shit out of uh, Samoa Joe, you know, does, like, pulls some shit uh, into it, where then Adam Cole comes in and then pins him, wins the belt. Then he could say, for however long he's out, he can't wrestle anybody because he's hurt. (laughs) 
Yeah. You know, that you could tell a, a story with that and then say, and it would be like, Wardlow's going to represent me as anybody. If I have to make title defenses, Wardlow's going to defend for me. Mm-hmm. And then and talk about like even worse after that and being like Adam Cole getting real, because they kind of started that with Wardlow already. Because Wardlow, I guess, lost the match with, with Samoa Joe. And then Adam Cole showed up on a video thing and was like, oh, you failed. So now you got to like make sure that these guys don't lose their belts. Yeah. Essentially. Mm-hmm. You're on the shit list. I'm like, if they would have done that and had him represent them and do all this shit and then even say, like, he lost in a match or something and then made Adam Cole lose it or something and come up with a reason. And that way it's, like, echoing the MJF stuff with making Wardlow kind of turn face again, kind of to a certain degree. But, like, it would make more sense to do that than to do what they were doing with Samoa Joe winning. Because why would you make... MJF, where they were beating him down all the time, where he had no luck beating him, or like, you know, just like the devil beating the shit out of him constantly, eventually wearing him down enough to lose the belt. Why didn't they do it where it wasn't against Samoa Joe? You know, because why are you going to give it to a stronger guy, like, to wrestle? You know, like, more of a problem for Wardlow or somebody else. You know, if you want to get the title off of somebody, you would do it to a weaker dude to take the title off of him. Mm-hmm. Or at least in my eyes, if I was a smart guy, I would be like Swerve or literally anyone else. I mean, probably not Swerve, but probably like Hangman or something because they've shown like Hangman could get knocked out easily with Swerve and shit. You know, mm-hmm. could have done literally anyone else other than Samoa Joe because now they're going to have issues with Samoa Joe. Yeah, we'll talk about that. That's the second to the last match of the card. Um, but the the next one is Roderick Strong uh, defeated uh, Orange Cassidy for the international championship. And talk about something that echoed the same fucking shit with John Moxley. Mm-hmm. But in a weaker fashion, literally almost, I mean, granted, it makes sense. I'm like, why didn't they just wait for Orange Cassidy to drop it to Roderick Strong here? They didn't even need to give it to John Moxley for that time. Mm-hmm. They could have had Orange Cassidy do this all the way to here and then get wrecked by Roderick Strong. Yeah, and then it would probably, well, and the one thing, again, this match was, eh, it, and it went, for me anyways, and it went 12 minutes and 45 seconds. It wasn't, well, it was the second shortest on the card. Well, that's why I say this hit beat for beat, pretty much the same shit mm-hmm. that John Moxley did mm-hmm. because all it was, was mainly John Moxley or Roderick strong beating the shit out of orange Cassidy, mm-hmm. orange Cassidy fought back. Couldn't do it enough. You know, couldn't do, couldn't withstand it. So then he lost. Yeah. Essentially the same match. The only good thing just that came out people. of this was so, that Kyle O'Reilly showed up. Yeah, at the end. yeah, and that's the which I don't. I haven't even seen that they've done anything with him. I don't think so. Uh, I haven't seen anything. But so either. like he showed up, and it's like he was able to. So essentially, they gave him a shirt, and then he was like, "I don't know," and then walked out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool now that Kyle O'Reilly's good because he, it like, sounds like he had health scares and everything else with his uh, injury and stuff, mm-hmm. which, like, I, I've said this enough. Like, I really love Kyle O'Reilly. I love uh, Roderick Strong, too. It's mostly because I love his backbreaker shit. I think that's one thing that I like him more than John Moxley. I feel he is more of a threat because he could legit – like hurt somebody like John Moxley feels like he pretends to me like, Hey, I'm making you bleed and stuff like that. But like, I'm, I'm like you getting your back broken, like right. Um, backbreakers over and over and over and over again would be more of a threat to me than making you bleed <laughs> because he'll just punch you in the head until you start bleeding. 
or whatever. Like, I feel like breaking your back is worse than fucking whatever John Moxley does. But, I mean, that's just me. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm also t- very tired of John Moxley. <laughs> oh, I've been tired of him for a while. And that brings us to the next match, which, which was Blackpool Combat Club defeating FTR. Yeah, the, and this was the, what? Like, why? Yeah, that's why. Why? That's what I'm saying. Why? It was like, and this match helped no yeah, one. Yeah, and not only that, it went 21 minutes and 50 seconds. It was the because second longest. Because they didn't longest. do another match since then, no, right? No, and it was the second longest match on the card. Yeah, and it's... it did nothing. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm like, it's crazy. It how... didn't help FTR, and then it definitely didn't help the Blackpool Complex Club, other than. Hey, they're considering them a team now, even though they're all a team. Like, all four, Wheeler, Yuta, and all of them are a team. Well, technically a faction, but they're a team. Mm-hmm. They all work together as a unit to take people out. Duh. Like, this helped nobody in the match. And uh, this was the... This was the weakest match to me, and I was just kind of like, can it just end? I'm just, like, so tired of, like, seeing John, like, John Moxley right now is being forced down on me right now, Mm -hmm. and I'm just, like, kind of tired of it. And I could see also, and I'm such a huge fan of, like, Cesaro or Claudio, and now it seems like I could see resemblances on why he never got to the main belt <laughs> well, like he had one match before he left well they never really like, he never really talks for one well that's what i'm saying even if he doesn't talk or whatever but like most of his matches are the same yeah like yeah. And whether he's a heel or a face he does the same shit like generally mm-hmm. so like and then he doesn't do anything where makes you really feel like you're caring about it mm-hmm like, you care about, like, the only thing that I've seen him do, like, that really was of note, like, that kind of, like, made you get behind him was the bar shit. Mm-hmm. Because he was just doing fire matches with Sheamus the whole time. And then the the last little bit of stuff that he did with Roman. But, like, you already knew that he wasn't going to win the belt. And then there was rumors that he was leaving. And everything, mostly because what else could he do? He he pretty much did everything that he could do there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, and now he's here, and it just doesn't feel like anything's happening. Oh, and it's the same. I feel and this it's is like just all this stuff. The bar. It just feels like they're just trying to fill time. Well, that's what like, I'm saying. This one, I it was like trying to have a fill-in match. You want to have John Moxley on I there? I kind of mentioned because that, there's like there's no reason to have a four-hour pay-per-view if there's no build-up to a lot of these matches. Yeah, you if there's have a, nothing that you really care to watch, it, it, it's like FTR does fire matches with everyone just about but have build but up to it that's what i, I was saying to, that yeah there's having, no reason that they needed a fight yeah just having people, i thought they were both faces yeah right uh, but like that's the thing about the blackpool combat club they ain't showing that they are a ha- feel uh, uh, a face or a heel faction mm-hmm. they're like in betweeners where they uh, they fill them in to be a bad guy with this team good guy with this one Mm -hmm. and it's just like it's falling flat to me yep like it and i'm just kind of tired of the blackpool combat and if they're back especially it feels weird to call them the blackpool combat club when william regal isn't in it well not only (laughs) that but they should be destroying people well that's what i'm saying like like they started doing that with the young bucks and stuff but they haven't done any of that shit since. That's the storyline. It's almost like Blackpool Combat Club can be the new shield where they go in and they just wreck Which people. is kind of like where I thought where they were headed. Yeah. But like, and I like the whole, this is real to me shit, mm-hmm. like aspect for their team, like where they're like, we're just going to hurt you. I like that. Yeah. Especially like we said before, Wheel of Yuta is the standout. Yeah. Like, 
standout by far. That match where he went against, uh, I think it was John Moxley, and he started bleeding everywhere, mm-hmm. and then people got behind him. That is Blackpool Combat Club number one right there. Mm-hmm. And like, I like this stuff with Brian, but I, I love Brian Danielson, period, anyway. I love his wrestling style and his promos and everything. And he just feels like a nice dude. But then also it's it seems like he could be very menacing too, mm-hmm. and that's one thing I like about it, about it. But like John Moxley, I'm just tired of his shit, man. And I just definitely didn't like. I literally was surprised that FTR lost. And I was like, okay, so does that mean that they're gonna do like another match and they're gonna do like a rubber match thing? And then now I haven't even seen anything, so it was like. This was fucking pointless. And it, especially knowing that I think uh, Dax got, uh, I don't know what it was from, but like he started bleeding out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. So then I was it like, was either, what? Yeah. John Moxley didn't start yeah. bleeding. It was sex. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so then, oh, when that's man, what you remember during annoying. a match is when somebody bled, that's pretty bad. Well, and it's funny when you look at it. And it wasn't John Moxley. Yeah, yeah. And but I mean, from that standpoint, again, again, another meh match. The next yeah. one was even. I don't even know the word, but I like Tony Storm. I think this. Um, oh, Deanna Pronto. Yeah, like I but, can hold, see why. But, yeah, but I mean, oh. her gimmick right now is brilliant with the whole black and white thing and how she's acting is total brilliant. And how they had Maria, Mariah May come out in her, like, old gimmick. Oh, like, yeah, like, doing the old gimmick. Yeah, yeah I thought that but was... I had never... Like, because at because first, Deanna, I thought she was doing the old shit. And then I was like, yeah. oh, that's funny. Yeah, Deanna Perrazzo came from Impact, right? She or, came from... It was one I of think, those. But, I think she was in Ring of Honor at first. Then she went to WWE... And was doing the Cruiserweight Classic, and then she was signed for a little bit. Then she went to Impact, and now she's in AEW. Yeah. And, so but, she's been all but over yeah, the place. Yeah, I've never really seen her wrestle until this match, and I did not care for what she did yeah. at all. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like they were kind of setting up the feud because they were like saying that they knew each other, that they used to live with each other, and then now it's like different. I don't understand the virtuoso thing because her wrestling style does not no. yeah. perform yeah. like she knows. Because I thought a virtuoso was like that's somebody that was great. well skilled yeah, in that's everything. Exact, that's exactly what it means. Right? Yeah. So, like, she does not feel like she is well known on every level of wrestling to have the name yeah it's another because version of okay. uh, what's, her, what's her name sabrina deeb's kind of gimmick when she was wrestling yeah. in aew yeah. it was yeah. like i uh, can't remember what her name was but anyway yeah this match was the shortest on the card it was a little over 12 minutes um but i could have done without this one too well, yeah um, it's mostly because it's like i would have much rather seen somebody else go against tony storm honestly like i mean for people that end up having such a huge, like, they have a lot of people in AEW, like, especially females, like Willow and all this stuff. It just seems like they got the virtuosa thing mm-hmm. just because they wanted to extend her reign out a little bit more. Well, and that's not- because I don't think she's doing anything else right now. Like, I don't know who she's wrestling against now, but. Tell you one match like, I'd like to, to me, see, but is Soraya versus Ruby Soho at some point? Well, yeah, I think there, eventually that's going to happen. Yeah. But like, I hate seeing romance angles, man. Oh, I'm so tired with, of like that with shit. With it's Parker. so played yeah. out. It's like, okay, two people are dating. Oh wow, who cares? And then it's like, why the fuck should Soraya give a shit about who she's dating? Yeah, was... and then now they're like. Oh, I was hoping that you would date Zach, my brother. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, really? No one cares about who somebody dating in the wrestling. But her thing. brother looks like, like a, a cheap version of a uh, rip, Cross. Uh, rip off of Carrying Cross. Yep. I I said this shit when I saw it first. I was like, it's like when you order Carrying Cross wish. off a of Wish. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. I was like, what the fuck, dude? I was, because even, like, the vet and the jacket looked the same. I'm not taking anything away from Zach. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not taking away. Uh, it's just fun. It was just funny seeing the first introduction of him in AEW. And then he was, like, looking like he was trying to be carrying cross, which was funny. And now, uh, especially old Karrion Cross when he was doing the fucking TikTok shit in NXT, yeah. I should say. And like when he had shorter hair, like the bald hair and stuff like that. But like, I don't really give a shit about that. I'm like seeing Soraya versus Ruby Soho, but they could have, they could have done something different than did the story where like they even split up Tony Storm and shit, but like, Soraya and Tony Storm are still heels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, what did what did the breakup do? Like, I understand if Tony Storm was playing the timeless t character as a face. Well, we talked about this a long but, time ago, and in my opinion, they started this out the right way. This could have been the women's version of NWO, where the WWE people came into AEW, all of them, and I'm talking about. Like even yeah. Mercedes Monet at this point could have joined the group and they could have taken yeah. over AEW, but they broke that up like really quick. I'm like, why did they do that? Yeah. Like literally they could it's have, like, yeah. they, could have even all, the, uh, they could have all formed a faction and done exactly the same thing. Like they yeah. could have taken over and the show. They, they could have doing done this from a women's perspective. The, I mean, they were even doing an NWO yeah, thing with the where they were painting. doing the green spray yeah, it was paint. Like, I was like, what are you doing? How do you fumble so hard with this shit? Like, it was literally written, like, I understand. Mercedes Monet showed up, like, way later. And I honestly think that WWE fumbled hard, but also at the same time, you never know how much money she was asking. If she was asking for, like, a super outrageous amount of money. Which I think of she course probably was. was. fucking go for that. She probably did because she saw her own self worth. If she thought that she was worth that money, then she might as well get and, your bag. And if more power else is to her. Go for if, if AEW gave her saying. the money, I'd if go If AEW there too. gave her fucking a shit ton of money, go get your bag, okay? But like, I would like you to like perform. Like, I just hope that what I've been seeing from her right now, I have not enthused about but i hope that at one point they're leading to soraya versus mercedes monet if they're both in AEW, i hope that that's where they build to her promos have been at one point atrocious. at one point i can tell you that it, well that's what i'm saying like i'm not a huge fan of it right now like i haven't seen anything where i'm like giving a shit they're just like putting her with willow where it seems like they're gonna feud at one point i'm like Soraya versus Mercedes Monet, it's built together. You don't even have to, you just say, hey, she's the first person that broke my neck, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Let, I mean, granted, like, she didn't mean to do it, but, like, that's all in the, all in the storytelling. I know that you're trying to be careful with Soraya, too, but fuck, man, it could tell the story. Yeah. Now, well, granted, because I don't think Soraya is going to be like, Cross to the idea, like she wouldn't be open to it, you know. Like I think if she's thinking about money or whatever, I don't think that she has any ill will towards Sasha Banks or Mercedes Monet or whatever. Well, but, she like, said she didn't because she actually asked for the move. Like she's talked huh? about it in the past. As Soraya asked for her to do that move, it just happened. Oh, it, um, hurt her. Like yeah, it wasn't. She's taken. She said she's taken that bump numerous times, and it didn't do anything to her. And this one just happened to do it. So I mean, yeah. But I mean, with that being said, I don't really want to. I mean, we don't need to continue on down in this path. I, I no, I know, I know. I was just, I was just saying while we were talking. Yeah, about I mean, it, like, I, yeah. I kind of want to move on to what was my number one match of the evening was Will Ospreay defeating Kanasuke Takashita. Oh yeah, that was hands down. It was, it was the best. It was one, probably the best match, the on the match of the year. Yeah, me. yeah, it's like yeah. so good. And I'm like, I was just like, fuck, and because this shows how good Takashita is too. Mm -hmm. If you could hang, uh, like, 
Granted, Osprey can sell the fuck out of it. Shit well, for they you. both did in this but match. Like, I remember. That's what I'm saying. They and, sold the fuck out. This for was each 22 other minutes, and it was constant movement. I don't know if there was yeah. a time when they stopped moving. I mean, it. it yeah, like the whole time they were going, uh, and then I'm just like, it just shows like how good of wrestlers both of them are. Mm-hmm. Now, if Takashita could talk as well as Osprey could. I think it would be another story. Like, you would be a future, like, world champion, go to, like, a, a, like WWE at one point and shit like that because he is a damn good wrestler. And it really shows in these matches when he's going against uh, guys like Osprey because he could definitely hang in yeah. this match. There's, and Os- like, way too much and, damn and good shit that happens. Every in this match, match I've seen Osprey do, the dude's incredible. He should be the title holder in this freaking. Dude, I'm telling you, for um, years. hopefully uh, at all in, like, I, w- I would like to have it where he wins it before then. Like, I w- I'm like, I don't want him to wait all the way up until what well, was all, all in. I think it was like May or something, right? Well, you, May or June or something. Yeah. But you know, that's probably what's going like, to happen because it happened yeah, with Soraya. We like called that shit yeah. last year. That Soraya would win well. That's the title. what I'm saying. I I would hope that he would at least defend or something. But I don't know what title it'll like, be yeah. because honestly, you know, mm-hmm. the 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 match was great. Five five stars, huge best best match of the card. But I don't know if there's there's not a crazy amount to say about it except for the fact they moved back and forth constantly. They took bumps. Each of them did. I mean, honestly, yeah. Will Osprey got his ass whooped for a good chunk of it. <laughs> Yeah, a good chunk of it, yeah. And like he got the kicks in the face yeah. and everything. That's oh man. Them damn German suplexes yeah. too. Fucking shit. Yeah. And- he was like, oh my god. That and that's one thing I I'm like I worry about now is like seeing people land on their necks and shit. Oh yeah, especially and with all he that. He did it like several fucking times and there were some few moves yeah. that were like, holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> It wasn't was the worst like, what the uh, ma- uh, move on the card. We'll talk about in the last match, but oh yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. but it was that dude is just nuts. Darby Allen is just crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, but yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't have much. Do you? How much more do you have to say on that match, though? I mean, it was the best no. match of the card. I mean, like but... it was, tr- it was, it was great, and I definitely think that. If any match out of AEW that I would probably rewatch again, it's probably that. Oh yeah, and my second, I mean, there's a few. And my, there's a few that I've gotten close to rewatching again, just because of how good my, they were. And my number two match on the card, and this tells you something: the number two match for me is the next one, uh, where Samoa Joe defeated Hangman and Swerve Strickland. Oh, and Swerve, yeah. But my problem yeah. is is I think Swerve should have won this match, not Samoa Joe. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree, hands down. And because I don't think Samoa Joe really needs a damn doesn't, title. And Swerve really. has busted his ass for the last Yeah, he months. has fucking gotten himself over so bad. Well, and like in this shit with him and Hangman yeah. where they even did a double turn it seemed like well, the whole time. And we didn't talk about it cuz we didn't do the podcast on wrestle dream but that was the uh i believe that one was the one that was the one where they did the the hardcore with the match where it was like last man standing or whatever it was called and that was the first match between them and that was a great match and swerve won that one if i remember right yeah which i was so surprised that uh, they actually like had him win it yeah and well and we were there uh, the crowd was behind him because he's actually from tacoma so it was swerves it was truly swerves house uh yeah that night so that made sense why he won but i just think he's been head and shoulders above hangman and samoa joe for the last few months yeah and promo skills yeah. and everything like just talking about like what they had on dynamite mm-hmm. motherfucker dude they were doing a contract signing with him and fucking samoa joe because i guess for dynasty it's going to be swerve and samoa joe and you know hangman's going to get interfere because he interfered in the and he made sure that swerve didn't get the title yeah and that's that's the 
crux that I love about this match, though. Uh, I love how it's like, it's, and Hangman's going to make it his mission to make sure he doesn't win it. Mm-hmm. And and that's one thing that I love about it is that it's not just putting this guy, like, on the back burner, like he's losing matches or whatever. At least it has a story written into it, like Hangman's set at, and it, it fits for Hangman's character, too, because Swerve was a piece of shit to him the whole time and threatened his family, did all this shit. And then, like, even how he could be a heel, he would be like, dude, it's literally like night and day Bret Hart shit, Mm -hmm. where, like, he would be like, you turned your back on me. I thought I was a good person, and uh, I cared about my family and this and that, and you turned my back on me or turned your back on me to fucking support this guy? Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> that pretty much trying to hurt my family, this and that. So screw all of you. And that's pretty much how, like, it, and it fits his character the whole time. Like, Hangman's story completely works. That's one thing I think they do super well, and I'm wondering if Hangman has something to do with it. Like, him doing it, and like, it's mostly his thing. It's that he wants his story to be, like, a realistic one. So, like, he plays a dude that's just how a person would act in a lot of these situations. Like, even though the crowd is cheering Swerve, Swerve is a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Like, especially in the previous ones where he tried to kill him with the fucking chain and stuff. Yeah. So, like, so it all fits. And, like, same with the finish. That's why I think that the finish was good. Because it's building up the Hangman versus Swerve story, well, too. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's really the only one on the card that had a storyline that has been a while. Yeah, that's the been re- a while, yeah. The rest of the stuff was kind of thrown together and just put on the card. And it feels like even, Samoa Joe was just yeah, there even, in the even, match, too. Even the, the final match, which we're going to talk about in a second, Sting and Darby Allen came out with Ric Flair and Sting's two sons, Garrett Borden and Stephen Borden Jr. Yeah, and Dra- Dragon or and Ricky, Ricky the Dragon, Dragon Steamboat yeah. came out too. But they defeated the Young Bucks, um, which I know in talking, Sting did not want to win this match. He actually wanted to lose. Oh, really? Yeah. Because Oh, he because, talked about it. Because uh. if you think about it, nobody wins their final match, but they were really pushing Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. for him to win it they wanted him to go out with a win so oh the young bucks wanted yeah. him to win it yeah, yeah. so that makes sense because they feel like they would be super nice dudes so they, yeah this was like... as you guys know that pay, pay attention to wrestling this was sting's retirement match but uh the biggest thing that came out of this match was darby allen doing a coffin drop onto a glass panel Dude, I swear to God, this chairs. guy's crazy, yeah. dude. There was I no... saw I saw this shit well, the, like there... fucking right before we started. He did watching. it off a ladder, and there's yeah. no padding. The dude hit the ground. Yeah, it's straight mean, up just glass. I mean, it's straight like, up it's glass. Like, what the shit? That's all. It was like glass and chairs. And that's, that's not the first that's thing that this dude's mean. done in a match. I mean, it's like fucking. Yeah, I, I'm and still... it was like in the first. I thought it was going to be near the end of the yeah, match or something the like that. Yeah. And it was like the first five minutes yeah. or something of the match because the match wasn't super no, long. No, it was 20 minutes. It was, all... it was 21 yeah. minutes. But so, I mean, like, yeah. probably in the first 10 minutes or eight or 10 minutes, he does this move. And then he was out for like yeah. eight. It was like or something. I guess because Sting's kids came out and then they were, and did typical like stinger splashes and stuff like that. And they were talking, they were giving props to the NWO stings, uh, and splash. Like, well, that, because they were like, damn, that motherfucker yeah, got up. Ju- they Junior to him was contract. jumping in the air, man. Yeah. I think like, Garrett so Borden like, was wearing the blue stuff and then yeah. Junior was wearing so the like, red stuff. But so, uh, so it was just funny. So they did that, and then they were beating up on each other and this and that. And then I forgot how it got turned. But, of course, it was going to turn to Young Bucks doing something. But it took a long while. Well, yeah, and I think the one that first turn was the missing bumps, the... Yeah. yeah, like he missed the fucking coffin drop or whatever off the off the ladder. 
I think that's what turned the match. Well, it was one on two essentially. For most I think of it was match. something before that too, but it, it, like uh, they pulled out tables and then they did all sorts of shit in this match. And I was like, are they really going to have Sting lose the match or whatever? But then as soon as it was like, I think 15 minutes in when they started to do stuff where Darby wasn't even in the ring and then they started super kicking Sting and then they did the, uh, TTE trigger, which I think they called it something else now. Maybe they still call it the BTE uh, thing. I know that they changed the move for the Dave Meltzer driver to the Tony Khan driver now. Yeah, I but, don't uh, know if they changed the BTE one to anything. Well, that's what I was saying. They might have kept that one the same. But, uh, yeah, so it was just funny. The whole whole match you could tell beat for beat was the stuff and i'm like fucking sting what are you doing he was jumping uh, jumping off of all sorts of shit i uh, get like it was thrown on adrenaline tables, hitting, but it was also and, his last yeah match. he was throwing like, on tables bang, and then right? it was, yeah yeah so, that's what that uh but still i still worry about the dude because he's old as shit i'm like uh i don't remember how old he is not now. as old as rick flair around, but... yeah like i think rick flair is in his 80s now but like uh, I think Sting is like in maybe the early seventies, maybe, or even like late sixties, maybe. Ric Flair is seventy-five. Oh, seventy-five. So uh, probably Sting is probably late sixties, early seventies. Then Sting is sixty-five. He's one. He's oh. right about the age of our parents. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so like, and still doing this shit, and he was no selling stuff. He was getting super kicked in the face, no selling it and shit. I was like, golly, dude. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, again, I was just worried for Sting. It was, like, it oh, was man. a meh match, though. Honestly, I mean, you could, yeah, you know, like, all I, that you I could really like, talk about really is could... the coffin drop, and it was talked about for weeks yeah. afterwards. Yeah, but they were like. And then so many people were shitting on him for like doing it. Well, too. he can like, do what he wants. Like, oh, like, 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 yeah, he's got the freedom to do yeah. like these crazy stunts if he feels like doing it. Like he's gonna be like Mick Foley later on in life, right? Oh like, yeah, where he's gonna be fucking hurt yeah. and shit like all the damn time. But I mean, like that's one thing about Jeff Hardy's body. Like I'm surprised that he isn't like full on hurting. Well, all I the think time. Part, like in the same that's probably, like condition that Mick Foley. But is. honestly, that's probably why he drinks. He probably, you know, yeah, drinks away probably the, did pain. Numb the pain or whatever. But, yeah. but he's also I talked about this in previous podcasts. Jeff Hardy is kind of floppy, and Darby Allen's kind of the same way. Like when they hit, they yeah. kind of just flop, bounce. You know, it's like yeah. So they don't take all this contact like. Oh, square. like, yeah, the like they don't get it. Yeah, it probably goes throughout their whole body, so it doesn't hurt. It's just them a much. guess, but the fact that he he's either that or he's just got a fucking crazy pain threshold because the dude yeah. does m worse stuff than Hardy ever did. Yeah, like he fucking does shit. That damn where I'm just cough like, and drop on like, the steps. Like he's that gotten, he did that time. Well, I'm like, what was it? Like, uh, the one where he got beat up by, um, Bullet Club Gold and shit. He got choke slammed off the apron and shit. Yeah, there's like so much damn shit that I'm just like, you don't need to do all of this. I care about like you are a great wrestler by yourself. You don't need to do these crazy. But stunts I know he got hurt. He off. got hurt to the point where he won't be able to climb Mount Everest like he wanted to. Oh really? Yeah, so I because I, I know he was that. saying that he wanted to do it, yeah. but like I didn't realize that he was that hurt. Yeah. Fuck. So, but I mean, also at the same time, he could put off a certain amount of time and then fucking still go. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> so essentially, that's what he talked about too. On uh, I think it was on Dynamite, right? Because he wasn't saying it during. Yeah. I because they so. talked about a bit like after the match. Where he was talking about, it. he was like, "You know, I would die for you in this match, knowing that it's your final one." And this and that. So, like, I think after this, then he started talking about that he was going to take time away because he was going to do Mount Everest and shit. Yeah. And that's when Bull Club Gold turned on him or, like, beat him up or whatever. Yeah. Because they were trying to do, like, Jay White was the nice guy. Then they did the match between them both. And then he, like, kicked him in the dick or something. I don't remember what it was. And then they're like, what? Scissor gang bang, bang, gang bang done. Whatever. <laughs> yeah.
<laughs> it's a gang. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, so that was the final <laughs> that was the final match of the card though. So Yeah. Um and so the next podcast so, we'll be doing it'll be WrestleMania. Yeah, it'll be WrestleMania. I'm figuring that we're probably gonna lump them both in together that way we don't I don't know, it might be just a big like uh one. Well, it depends on how there are to the there's a, like 14 matches total or something like that. I sent you the card. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. But um Yeah, there's a lot. That's coming up this weekend. So we hope to push that out yeah. in the next week. Yeah, so hopefully that'll be yeah, like hopefully. And we got like a few podcasts that we got in up right. do, uh doing. So like hopefully if everything works out at least sometime next week we'll be able to have it out but yeah if you hopefully. guys hopefully so, you guys have enjoyed the podcast and if you guys haven't liked and subscribed to our channel already hit you know we'd yeah, high, to, we'd, do all the yeah, socials we'd great, like everybody's streaming and everything yeah we greatly <laughs> appreciate it and if you want to be notified just click that bell and you'll get notified when the new podcast new videos all that good stuff come out um, we're straight, we're streaming, like Josh said, on Twitch quite regularly. Um, I'm under the heart of, I'm under heart of geek. And then my brother, Aaron's under Aaron Christopher TV. Um, and then I'm under rockified fatty, yeah. even though that I stream a lot less, Yeah. but like, uh, so, so before we end the podcast, I just want to kind of mention the CM punks, the, the interviews and stuff, because I'm getting tired of like seeing stuff where. Like, people are either shitting on CM Punk or totally, uh, like, behind CM Punk. He did an interview just a few days ago. I think it was for WrestleMania and stuff, like, on, like, Ariel Helwani, where essentially he talks about the events from Brawl Out and All In and everything before he quit. Uh So... He says about stuff about Jack Perry and stuff like that. Doesn't really say that any of it's his fault. Essentially, he says, like, essentially, he tells Tony Khan on certain instances with Jack Perry about breaking glass with, like, a. he talks about breaking something with the car where he wanted to destroy the window of a rental car. So several people told him not to do it. And then he still was adamant with them and cursing out people and stuff like that. So CM Punk came up to him and told him, we can't do that shit because otherwise no one will rent cars to us anymore. This and that. Understandable. Like, it doesn't, like, you could find ways around things where you don't have to break uh, windows off of shit. Or, like, tear them off like Brock Lesnar did. So, like, if this is 100% like what the case was, sounds like Jack Perry wanted to do his fucking shit, and then he got butt hurt because people told him no. That not, because they said that this was previous before even All In happened. So then when he did the Grow Crimey River, this and that, and then he mentioned that he didn't punch Jack Perry, but he did choke him a little bit. So until Samoa Joe split it up and so on and so forth. So pretty much he doesn't say he, he apologizes for anything that he does. He just says he's doing a line in the sand with everything that happened. He just kind of like, he told them that they ain't going to like what he does. (laughs) Like if he's forced into having to solve a situation, they ain't going to like what he does. And he called Tony Khan a clown. And to me, I kind of agree with him and kind of don't. Like, I feel like he is who he is and he is not going to change. And I do, uh, don't know him personally. You said CM Punk One thing called guys, Tony Khan a clown? Yes, he called Tony Khan a clown. Well, of course he, he said would. He, does, he, he has a history he, of doing that. He called Vince McMahon well, one, what, too. I mean, yes. It's like some, and that's what I'm saying. To a to a degree, I think that he is just a hundred percent him, and if you don't do stuff that he likes or wants to get done, he will call you a clown or bash you or whatever. And that's why I think that to me, I get where he's coming from, but also at the same time, you need to grow up. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I think there's certain ways to handle a situation that doesn't come across like 
you need to choke somebody out. Like, I get uh, you get in few, uh, like, I don't know the situation because I wasn't there. But I know I've gotten into situations where people have been very difficult in my face. And then I get angry and then I start yelling and well, the- do stuff that I don't want to do. But you have a conscience. You have certain things that you could do to get away from the things. <laughs> like walk away or just say, hey, I'm going to go wrestle. And I think if you were a 40-year-old man, like how old, how old is he now? Like 43 He's or 45. something like that? He's almost as old as 45. I okay. If you're a 45-year-old man, you need to grow up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you need to stop having all this anger and quit trying to blame other people. Well, for that's shit. always somebody like, else's fault. That's why I'm like, yes, you, you go and talk about the whole time where you don't, you want to talk to a lawyer or you want a lawyer around every time you talk to Cole Cabana, Cole Cabana obviously wants to uh, stop with the fucking shit and cares about you because that's why he wanted to talk to you. Okay, because nobody just wants to be like, hey, can we hash this shit out if they didn't care about you? Okay, like, because honestly, they wouldn't have given a shit and wouldn't have said anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's why I'm saying grow, um, grow up. I don't know the whole circumstance for everything because everybody's private and doesn't need to tell anybody everything. But fans... Leave the shit alone. You could have the opinion of like not liking somebody, like not liking him as a wrestler, not liking him like a wrestler, whatever the hell. Like, but you don't need to put your two cents in when you weren't there. Mm -hmm. You don't know all. You know of what he's telling you as uh, as his truth. Yeah. Like if Jack Perry came out and said something conflicting where it was a totally different thing, then you'd usually meet somewhere in the middle, and usually that's where the truth is, okay? I am so I am getting so tired of wrestling fandom right now because um, when I keep seeing stuff where it's about Roman or anyone else, it's either half this, half that, when I'm definitely tired of the coalescing nature where it's AEW is like WCW. I want them to be two totally different things, and people keep referencing AEW versus WWE. Why can't they just be two separate things where you could watch both? Stop fighting about two different... It's apples and oranges. Well, part okay? of that's because they're both doing it, though. I mean, it's like... Well, that, but that's what I'm saying. That's why AEW will say, never beat WWE. They will yeah, never do it's it. never going so to come close. Even, it's never going to come close. So to even this Netflix deal and everything. Yeah, that even talking it. about that, the shit. I said that last time when we were talking about the WWE pay per view or premium live event. Yeah, like, the fact that they got a the five Netflix billion thing. dollar deal tells you they're they won. Like they're yeah. AEW can't and, even get a new deal with Time Warner, so it's like yeah, it's like, dude and. That's the main thing. I'm like, enjoy what you want to enjoy. Okay, stop yeah. making it like the WWE's all bad. But also, if you put sure, out good I content, get you, could get, you could get up there with them. But right now, I don't well, feel that's they're putting out crazy you, good content. They're stop, just, they're just, stop focusing on anti WWE well, or po- anti AEW shit but, and just fucking do out a good product. But this is also the last thing I'm going to say, and I think we should end the podcast because we're already sitting. And no, a, that's what I was already like figuring. Yeah, an hour and fifteen minutes. But, but, um, the pro- part of the problem I see with AEW right now is they bring in these wrestlers and they're giving them creative control almost all of them so it's like yeah sometimes you don't need to do that like let you know create the storylines for them sometimes stuff happens organically but i think uh, what what is happening in aew is a lot of these bigger wrestlers that are in the group mercedes monet is one of them i think she wants to she has control over what she's doing right now a lot of oh yeah what yeah yeah, and I think that's why she's not looking very good, because WWE yeah. had more control over her gimmick than she did, and it made her look yeah. better. 
I think right. And I I, uh, I agree with that. Like, I think that certain things that they end up doing, like, I think there's a certain give and take between them both. I think that's – they need to meet somewhere in the middle. I don't think that they need to f- have full control. It's like one thing when you end up having certain – aspects that are controlled well nobody's like, big enough to me uh, but like nobody's big enough in aew to have creative control over their stuff nobody's big yeah. enough like you don't have a hulk hogan w that made sense with wcw that he would have say in what he did he he'd been around for 20 some odd years before yeah. he went there like 30 years or Rick whatever Flair, yeah. sting those guys make sense that they would have creative control over their stuff but like mjf yeah. no Sorry, he hadn't been around. Well, that's why. And that's why when CM Punk was talking about like how he was like, I thought we were supposed to sell tickets and sell merch and shit, and then obviously it wasn't the case. Obviously, that just sounds like that he was just wanting to put out a good wrestling product, like uh, Tony was, and he wasn't giving a shit about like the money that went into it and stuff like that. And I think that there's a dichotomy you or dichotomy. I think that's the right word where you have to have both. If you want it to be successful, you need to make money. Yeah. Like you can't just be like, Hey, I'm going to lower down my ticket sales to make sure to, that I fill out my arena, even though that I'm not making money. <laughs> I'm just putting forth the image that I'm making money, even though I'm not. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Like, and the ratings are going down and all this shit. It's like, I, I just wanted to say, because it's kind of like with AEW at the time, but the CM Punk stuff. Oh, no. I, and, I to totally, tell, I and to tell people that they need to relax, dude. Oh, <laughs> like, for real. I told, We're supposed I to have told, fun. I totally get wrestling. it, but CM Punk's <laughs> part of the problem. I'm like that's well, that's, that's what I'm saying. All I, I agree. To point out was and, that and some people were saying time. that he has a different viewpoint when he's in WWE now. He, was, he has to. They're because, saying that he's nice and but shit, he has but like to. he wouldn't have the same freedom. I guarantee there, you, he started you know? off the same way in AEW. Then he got power yeah. hungry in his head because of how they brought yeah. him in, and you know they created yeah. collision I mean, after the first incident where he decided to say whatever the fuck he wanted during that media scrum. So then collision yeah. was created for all these wrestlers that didn't want to wrestle with everybody else. Yeah. And then he can't even, Which, and shouldn't even, even have that as a conversation. Yeah, but even with that, you do that. That's what I'm saying. You give the wrestlers too much say in what the fuck's happening. Yeah. You no, know, you yeah, own especially them. Especially when you making two are, separate shows. And I would yeah. say you're paying them. You tell them what the fuck they're going to be doing. Yeah. They may not and be happy got, with it. You're not gonna they be can have, around. They can have oh, say into what they're doing. No, it's all right. <laughs> they, they can have say into what they're doing. I'm not saying not to have say, but not to have control over it. Because Yeah. Like they shouldn't fully have that's not their job. Their job is to every their job is to get in the ring and do their job. They need to yeah, wrestle and, and cut from money. Them. And that's what like get money so, pretty much. But yeah, I mean, sell I, tickets, get money. But yeah, I mean, CM Punk, he's been injured more than he's wrestled. So I mean, that's part of the, especially now. Yeah, so I mean, like, he gets in the Royal Rumble and gets injured again. So I am a fan of CM Punk, but lately I've just been tired of this shit. Yeah. I want people to grow up and do their jam- and like be around people. First off, you don't have to like Cole Cabana, but you could at least talk to him. Like at least to find yeah, but, you didn't need a lawyer around. That just sounds yeah. like being an asshole. Well, that's right what there. I'm saying. But I mean, we don't Where know the. You ba- don't want to just talk to him for a minute. But you don't know the backstory. But at the same time, I don't. That's know what I'm it's... saying. I don't know what Colt Cabana did. To, but or, I also don't like. I don't know the whole story. But, so like, and I won't I also, because I don't know these two people personally. Yeah, I also, <laughs> also don't know if it matters. But at the same, you know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like. But, but like I understand if people don't like each other, but they it, you don't have to like fucking act like other people are like getting people out of their jobs and this and that. Like just fucking do your job, man. <laughs> but yeah, so for everybody that made it to this point of the podcast, we greatly appreciate it. If you're enjoying this content, like I said earlier, and you haven't liked and subscribed our channel or 
subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcasting platform. Just hit that button. You'll hear this content pretty much every month when there's a pay-per-view event out. So, um, yeah, pretty and much, then yeah. we've got other podcasts out there that you'll see under the Heart of Geek label. So there's Scream Creeps for our horror fans out there. We've got Sci-Fi Graveyard for our sci-fi enthusiasts. We've got Theater Junkies for all the new premieres that are coming out that we deem I guess appropriate to talk about on a podcast like we'll be talking about yeah, Ghostbusters after uh Frozen Empire and what was the other uh one? what's it called uh Godzilla, Godzilla and Kong. Kong and then a new empire we might talk about first omen maybe on Scream Creeps but or on theater I don't know Junkies. something like that but like uh but, what's it called there's another but, one too yeah. that I saw but uh, Civil I can't War remember Civil it, War no. comes out next week but but um yeah the other one is Morbid Instinct is our true crime podcast. Um, at some point, I'll start my sports uh, podcast called The Scoreboard. But Which I need to do something about uh, the anime one, but I just haven't But yeah, so out that's game. everything under the Heart of Geek Network. Uh, you see all the videos on YouTube currently. You just click a playlist for that particular podcast and you'll see them. But, um, yep. Yep. Josh, you can go ahead. So, and... thank you for every uh, for listening, and we'll talk to you guys in the next uh, podcast for WrestleMania Night One and Two. Yeah. We have a good one, everyone, Bye. and we'll talk to you next time.